Art Makers was made possible by the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education, Studios on the Park in Paso Robles, and the Arts Collaborative. Hi, Art Makers. I'm Jessamine Patterson, and we are here at Studios on the Park in Paso Robles, surrounded by many different kinds of art. Today on our program, we will meet Henry Matisse, an artist who also made many different kinds of art. He was a painter, sculptor, collage artist, and printmaker. Our project today is inspired by some of his prints. So let's get going. This artwork is called The Snail. Does it look like a shell of a snail spiraling toward you? The Snail is a large-scale collage work by Henry Matisse in the final years of his life. It's a big canvas at 10 feet across. It involves bright, colorful strips and squares of paper. They are assembled to resemble the abstract shape of a snail. Abstraction is the process of taking away or removing elements from something in order to reduce it to a set of essential characteristics. Matisse rejected the style of realism. He liked to work in abstraction. The snail is an abstract collage of a snail. Matisse is also well known for his use of color. This is a color wheel. Complementary colors are positioned opposite a primary color on the color wheel. Red is the opposite of green, yellow is a cross from purple, blue is the opposite of orange. Do you see how Matisse is using complementary colors in the snail? He has positioned a red square next to a green one, orange by blue. The snail shows Matisse's interest in bright color. He has arranged complementary colors alongside each other to create a vibrant effect. And color is what Henry Matisse became known for in the art world. During his long career, Matisse created paintings, sculptures, and prints. But let's back up a little bit. Henri Matisse was born in 1869 in France. As a young boy, he wasn't interested in art. Sometimes it takes a while for us to understand what we want to do in life. For Henri Matisse, he thought that he wanted to become a lawyer. But when he was 20 years old, he took a drawing class. It changed his life, and he gave up law and traveled to Paris to become an artist. His earliest paintings are very much like the works of Impressionists. This is called The Bridge. It is an Impressionistic painting. The colors are more realistic and not very bright. However, a few years later, you can see how Matisse is experimenting with color. Woman with a Hat is a vibrant portrait of his wife. When it was exhibited in 1905, it caused quite a sensation for its radical use of color and brushwork. His colors are not realistic, such as the bold green stripe down her nose with yellow at the tip. It really shocked the art world. Art critics at the time called his style Favist or wild beast. The term stuck. The Favist movement was characterized by painters using pure, brilliant color. Their brushwork was aggressively applied, creating a sense of an explosion on the canvas. Harmony in Red, 1908, is a brilliant celebration of pattern and decoration. The rhythms of the foliage pattern on the tablecloth and wallpaper are echoed in the background through the window. Still Life with Geraniums, 1910, shows how Matisse used color and form color is vibrantly on display. The vivid pink geraniums captivate the viewer, acting as a visual anchor that radiates throughout the canvas. The woman in a purple coat is a great example of the use of color and light to express his emotions. The vivid purple coat with the black outline makes the woman almost pop off the lounge she is on, making her the main focal point. Here are a few more well-known paintings by Matisse. Music, 1910. The Goldfish, 1912. Decorative Figure, 1925. Pink Nude, 1935. Lady in Blue, 1938. Portrait of Lydia, 1947. 
Early in his career, Matisse would cut up pieces of paper to help him work out compositions on his canvas. Later, Matisse turned almost exclusively to cut paper as his primary medium, calling the technique drawing with scissors. Matisse became ill when he was older and had to work from his bed or a wheelchair. Painting became too difficult, but he found that he could be very creative with scissors. For his large cutouts, assistants would help him place the final shapes. This collage shows the different ways Matisse cut out paper, from larger shapes such as the purple horse to more careful and detailed cutting involved in the yellow, white, and black shapes. Here, Matisse has created lots of shapes that look similar to each other, but each one is a unique leaf. You can see how he has repeated these similar shapes, almost filling the entire picture with leaves. Matisse was involved with printmaking for more than 50 years. Printmaking is the technique of making pictures or designs by printing them from specially prepared plates or blocks. His prints were mostly portraits of friends, family, and fellow artists, as well as images of female figures and nudes. In this etching, Matisse is sitting before a mirror teaching himself to etch. It depicts the artist exploring the intricacies of the technique. He also illustrated books. One of his most famous is called Jazz. This plate is one of 20 made to illustrate jazz. Despite its musical title, the book features many images about the circus and theater. The illustrations come from cut and pasted colored papers, which were printed using a stencil technique known as pochoir, which is a French word for stencil. From 1900 until his death in 1954, he completed more than 800 artworks using printmaking techniques. He is widely recognized as one of the greatest and most diverse printmakers of the 20th century. I love the work of Henry Matisse. Today we're going to make some artwork inspired by his printmaking technique. Hi, welcome back to Art Makers. I'm Jessamine Pattison uh, here at Studios on the Park in Paso Robles. Today we are making a lesson about Henry Matisse and his printmaking techniques. So some of the materials you will need today are paper, a pen. Uh, if you'd like to do this warm up, we have string and a bunch of other materials that will be for printmaking, um, blocks and cutting materials, but if you don't have any of those things and don't want to go to the art store or aren't able, you can also just use a nice piece of styrofoam and a pencil. So don't worry, it doesn't have to be an expensive project. We're going to get started with a line drawing warm up to get into our art making brains. And I like to use a long piece of string and just kind of put it on my, it's easier to see on this black clipboard, but make a nice shape with it or some shapes within the lines. And I use, like to use a black marker. And then I'm going to uh, trace with my marker in the air, this line first so I can find it. I'm going to close my eyes and see if I can remember it in my artist's mind's eye. And then I'm going to start. It comes off of the paper, so I will look mostly at my string while I make a continuous line drawing. I'm touching the string with my eyes while I draw the line with my pen. It's not exact, but it is close. I feel like I can move on to the next part of the lesson. So one thing to notice about my white string on my black background also is that it is like um, our printmaking technique that we're going to use. So whatever you see that's black, that will be ink. It's like a stamp. And whatever is white, 
has been cut out like a relief print. So this would actually not be what you see if you printed. This would be what you see if you printed with the way that we're doing. There's also etching, which would be the opposite, and maybe we'll get into that in another episode. But next, I just wanted to show you a couple of the examples from what I did before. I have this block of rubber that I carved, and I'm going to use another larger block today, but there's also linoleum blocks that you can get. These are harder to cut. This is kind of a, like one step above cutting through butter. It's pretty easy. These ones are harder and can be more frustrating and maybe for a more advanced student or artist. And they have all kinds of sizes. And then there's just styrofoam, like I mentioned. You could even go, you know, when you go out and there's styrofoam on your takeaway food, um, you could cut out a nice big piece of uh, styrofoam from that trash and recycle it and make it into art. We're going to look at our negative space also, which is something that's really tricky with printmaking. I actually wore some earrings today that have negative space to show you. Um, all of the space that is around this diamond, the space that you can see through, is the negative space. So if I were to make a print out of this, I could paint on top of it, and then anything that is a line would be black if I was using black ink. It will start making more sense as we continue. Put that back in there. So for example, I started off with a completely blank piece of rubber and I drew what I wanted to cut away. So I traced some scissors. I laid down some scissors on my piece of paper. I traced them. I didn't add the details because I was just looking for negative and positive space. So in this case, this is the negative space behind it, behind the scissors and inside the scissor handles and I made it so this might be the negative space. We know that scissors, this is not negative space. It's positive space. It takes up space. But for the sake of the project, I wanted to see what it might look like if I made that into negative space. And then another practice is called noton. It's a Japanese art making technique, and it is also working with negative and positive space. So I took a black piece of paper and a white piece of paper and then I cut out part of a heart and then when I move it like so it is negative space over here and then negative space here so these are all just ways to kind of get our mind looking at things differently if I was going to go ahead and make a Notan um, example, I'm just going to cut out a piece of just any kind of line, really. I'm going to make a crown looking shape. You can draw it first, but you don't have to. And then I keep it where it is, still inside of my black paper. And I line up the edges of my black paper, I could glue it down. Make sure, nope, that is backwards. So, and then I go ahead and I flip it over like a mirror image. And that is my negative and positive Notan uh, example. Where else do we see prints? Think of the word footprints. You can see prints that are made by your shoe, animal prints. You can see tire tracks, those are footprints. We make prints when we do um, pushing, pushing your hand into clay. Those are also some things that we do when we're a kid. Um, thumb prints, fingerprints, right? So there's a lot of different places that we see prints that you're probably not thinking about, but now that you're looking for them, hopefully you'll notice them and find them. And in order to make my best art, I like to do some thumbnail sketches first. So I did them for the, the block cut that I did. 
I traced my block in different places, which I will do here again. So I'm going to go ahead and trace my block. I'm going to make sure I have enough space to trace it a couple of times. Do one portrait up and down, and then one landscape horizontal, one horizontal, one vertical. And then I was working with some images that Matisse did that were line drawings making faces. Oh, I forgot one thing actually. There's also these cool things called scratch boards. So when I was a kid, we used to charge a piece of paper. You would color it with all kinds of colors with crayon or marker, and then you'd cover it with black crayon. And then you take something and you would mark it and re remove the black. So this is called a scratch board. So where I make a scratch, there's white. So I'm going to make a couple more scratches. This is the cutting tool by Speedball um, for the printmaking with lino or rubber. Can't use this for etching, but they have these little hidden uh, blades in here and they're not too, too sharp, so you don't have to be too careful putting them in. But when you are cutting, you do have to be careful. I've cut myself pretty well on a wooden block before in college. And I place my little blade in here and tighten it up. So anywhere I make a mark, it will scratch off the black. And if you are a sensitive soul like me, it feels like fingernails on a chalkboard and I don't like it very much, but this is a fun activity and it will help me understand drawing on styrofoam that wherever I draw will be white and wherever is not have it, where it doesn't have an impression or an indention will be black. It's like a stamp, a rubber stamp. And now I am making my thumbnail sketches and I'm going to go ahead and do the same example that Matisse did. I have an image pulled up on my phone. And this is a knockoff of Matisse. It's somebody who likes to make art like Matisse, but I am going to, I'm not sure how this shows up on the camera, but I'm going to make my marks. thumbnail sketch. It's called a thumbnail because a lot of times people draw them so small that they are the size of your thumbnail. It's good just to figure out your composition, make sure you're taking up the whole space. And I think for this one, I'm just going to do one of my line drawings with my string. Okay, so this will be the opposite of what I have on my print. It will make more sense as we move along. So there's my thumbnail sketches, and then I'm going to go ahead and trace this with a pencil. This is a good transfer method. So if I take my pencil and trace it, I'm going to make kind of a thicker line that I don't have to necessarily cut out. I'm going to go over all my lines with the pencil. And because the pencil is soft, when I turn it over and rub it onto my block, I'll be able to see where I can cut. Okay. So, I'm going to place my block. Either side is fine. 
I flip it over, make sure it's in the middle, and then I'm gonna take my pencil and just rub, I'm making a rubbing. I'm transferring my drawing onto my block. It's magic, except for it's just art. Same, same, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, make sure that I have it pressing hard enough. I'm using the side of my pencil. I'm gonna pick it up just a little bit. Oh, yep, looks good. I think I can make it transfer a little bit more down here. <laughs> up here, did I get it? Yes, I did. All right. One thing to keep in mind is it will be backwards from your drawing, okay? So now that I have, I chose which thumbnail I wanted to do, I transferred onto my block. I'm going to use my cutting tool and make my cuts. When I'm cutting, I do wanna make sure that I'm always cutting away from my hand. I don't wanna hold my hand here and cut into my hand because you can cut yourself. So I'm gonna start by cutting away here. And I do press in a little bit. I put, put this part in the palm of my hand and I am holding my block so that it won't move. And I'm gouging, but not too much as I cut out my line. And I can always cut more, but I can't cut less. It's kind of like a haircut, right? <laughs> can I have some of my hair back, please? No. All right made a line here and depending on the size of line you want there's also different cutting tools um, some of them are v-shaped and some are like a shovel and round shaped so it depends on what kind of line you'd like okay i have all of my lines marked i'm going to get a regular piece of paper I've got a crayon that I peeled off the paper so that I can use it sideways for a rubbing. And I'm going to place my paper on my rubbing here. And I can see if there's anything that I want to change or make deeper. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. Let's make some prints. All right, so in order to ink up, I also have this plastic sheet. You can use glass or plastic. I do want to warn you that you might wanna wear something that you don't mind getting dirty while you're using this ink. And I'm gonna make a small line across the top of my inking area. And then I slowly pick up a little bit of ink and then I start moving in one direction. You want to make it so that it's even. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and try this one. Okay, get a little more ink. Do it sideways. And then I'm gonna try with a smaller piece first. I'm gonna make sure that my paper is placed exactly on top of my artwork. Okay, I missed a little bit, but once it's dropped down, you gotta leave it where it is. I have a spoon uh, that is very good, a very good tool for burnishing or rubbing in my print. Before I'm done, I want to just peel up the side of it and see if I've missed anything. I'm going to make a little bit more of an effort to rub it on, and I think actually we just need some more ink. All right, so this is a first edition. We made one. Ta-da! Here they are, side by side. I like it. All right, let's try our styrofoam. and. 
you do want to rinse this off as soon as possible because it will make a difference if it's clean for the next time you print. But I'm just going to place it to the side here for now. And I'm going to try my styrofoam print. Take a little more ink from the top, just pull a little bit down. Okay, almost there. I see a little bump in my ink. You hear that sound? There it is. A little sticky, a little sticky, sticky. Okay, let's see. I think I did this diagonally on this one last time. how it goes here. I could actually go like this, it's easier. See it, place it so that it fits. Move it this way. And with my styrofoam, I'm just gonna use my hand um, or this one because it can. it's so soft, I might make an indentation on it that would affect the printing. So we'll just try it with this. It'll probably be a little bit lighter and let's pull it up a little bit. Yeah, looks nice. Quite a bit lighter, a little less uniform, but I'm gonna give it one more inking and do a larger piece of paper and we can see the difference between the wood cut or the lino cut or the rubber stamp. There's also wood, uh, wood plates, which are pretty fun, which is like what they started off with back in the day. Printmaking is also really known for like newspaper prints. Um, that's how they used to print all the books also. We've come a long way, but we still use these processes for making beautiful things. I got it on there. New piece of paper. So I'm calling this my register here so I can line up my paper and keep it straight. I'm gonna burnish it here with my hand. I can feel the edges. Use the side of my hand a little bit. Remember, you can peel it up a little bit before you take it all the way off. Make sure you didn't miss anything. We have some interesting uh, lines there. I wonder if something was on my hand, but there we have it. Different editions look different, different uh, prints. So here is the two examples, one with my rubber plate, one with my styrofoam plate. You can decide which one you like best. So thank you for joining us today on Art Makers. I hope you enjoyed our lesson about Henry Matisse and his printmaking techniques. It does take a little bit of time to get used to or comfortable with this technique, but I find it so much fun because you never know what you're gonna get really. They're all different prints and um, you could even use it for making cards for birthdays or Christmas and what have you. And um, I hope you join us again next time. Thank you so much.